Some of the greatest struggles that Ian and I have faced, or Ian and my wife and I have faced, have really been around communication. Um, when Ian was young, he just didn't even quite understand the whole concept of communication, uh, which then made meeting his needs, and obviously, like any child, he had many needs, that made it really very difficult. Uh, as well as other, other challenges were the fact that he was quite say irregular in his behavior, like his sleep pattern was very uh, mixed up and um, his desire to eat or to play or things like that, they were also really kind of less regular, which puts a lot of challenges on a family when, you know, when we need to do things like go to jobs and we like to sleep at certain times and things like that. Um, but I'd say the biggest problem was really Ian communicating his needs to us and then our, also our communicating our needs to him uh, when we couldn't, say, immediately do what he wanted to do. Well, the biggest challenge teaching Ian uh, initially was coming up with a strategy that was really successful. Um, the standard strategies that we use, that, that we would use in teaching a typical child just didn't seem to work. The idea that I would do something and he would learn by imitation, that doesn't really work with an autistic child, at least not with most of the autistic child, children that I've come in contact with. And so eventually we, came, we discovered or learned about this uh, applied behavior analysis or ABA style of teaching. And that really has been the power tool. That has been the thing that's enabled us to help teach him how to communicate, that's able, enabled us to teach him how to uh, take care of himself. Um, and the biggest challenge with that is simply investing the time and energy. Uh, we, we determined uh, when he was younger, it took us about 1,500 trials or 1,500 lessons in order to teach him just one word. So in other words, I had to show him you know, the picture of the apple or the actual apple and then we were doing sign language and so then show him apple. And it took us about 1,500 times before he had really made that connection. Um, so, you know, now he's got a vocabulary of over 600 words. Not all of those took quite 1,500, but what, quite, a f quite a lot of time. I think that's the biggest thing that I think we've had to come to terms with, is that everything that our child is going to learn is just going to take a bunch of time. He is an only child, um, which is partly a result of the consequences of his autism. We just didn't feel as though we had the resources to give another child the kind of attention that they would deserve as well. Ian was about 20 months when, um, when the diagnosis process began. And it was a case that he actually uh, started to lose some of the developmental milestones that he had acquired up to that point. Um, Ian is now just over 15 years old. Okay. Uh, our experiences were really very strong. Um, because Ian was already acquainted with the ABA style, um, the, the ABA style, which they're also using in training Ian with Speak All, we find that he made that connection uh, very easily. Uh, as I think, you know, any child you, with this kind of reinforcer kind of uh, and, um, protocol is going to respond well to. Um, so, you know, he, uh, he qu very quickly picked up uh, on on the approach that we're going for, and especially because we were using things that he really cares about. And I think that's a primary thing around any kind of teaching, is that first you start off with working with the things that they really care about. Things like cookies, mm -hmm. things like crackers, things like bubbles, um, have always been very st strong interests for, for him. So of course those are the words you start teaching him. Words like thank you and please, most children really don't have you know, much inherent interest in that. Uh, innate interest in that. I think that, I mean, Ian certainly is the, I think he, he acquires them just as quickly with Speak All as he does with, uh, uh, as he does in other strategies. Uh, the most important thing simply is to, is to be very clear, uh, is to come up with strategies of training that are really very clear uh, and then simply rewarding him when he gets that successfully and, um, you know, and, uh, both both through the actual reward 
of the item, but also through our own uh, enthusiasm and care. And we're very fortunate that Ian's a child who, over time, has learned to actually want to please us, to want to be successful. And I think that Speak All is one of those ways, through communication, that we can help our children become successful, which then makes everybody happier. I think that Speak All is a really straightforward approach to teaching communication to children. And I think that's really useful in lots of environments where you can't always have as much specialization in training and specialization in, um, in learning. Um, I'm very fortunate. I've got a master's in clinical and counseling psychology with a specialty in neuropsychology. So, you know, I'd worked with autist autistic children before I even had a child of my own. Uh, I had done cognitive assessments with, with people of all different areas. So, for me, these concepts of training were pretty uh, clear and, un and understood. And um, so I was able to engage in tasks that were more complex. But for most people, an autistic child kind of comes into their lives and suddenly they're faced with all of these different challenges, the challenges of taking care of a, of a job, of a spouse, of another child. And so if we can uh, come up with a, a system such as the Speak All system that is very straightforward um, with, a, with just a very, I say, basic amount of training, people can learn how to help their children communicate their needs. And as we all know, a child who's getting their needs met is a much easier child to live with and a child who has a more satisfying life. And that's really what the goal is for me is having my son having a life that he really feels satisfied in, where he feels he can express himself, where he feels as though he can be understood. Those are really powerful tools. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I've found as an autistic parent uh, is, is that we aren't in this alone. Um, the reason that I'm here talking to you, the reason that we participated in uh, as subjects in developing this product is because we're all going through this together in some ways. And if we have to develop the tools on our own, um, we aren't going to get nearly as far. But if we can reach out, if we can get support and encouragement from the academic community, from the clinical community, from other parents, those are the kind of things that are going to make all of our lives easier and more fulfilling.